Hello everyone. Welcome back. Today we begin with class 9 geography chapter 3 exogenetic process part 1. In this lesson we are going to study about the external processes which takes place on the surface of the earth. As you know in the previous lesson we have already studied about the endogenetic process that is the internal process. So Many landforms are formed due to in the internal movements. Many processes occurring on the earth surface also leads to the formation or degradation of the landforms continuously. In this lesson we'll be studying the exogenetic that means the external processes and the landforms formed by them. External processes occur because of the forces working on the earth surface. Uh, they are mainly solar energy, gravitational force, uh, the kinetic energy associated with the moving objects. on the earth surface for example wind just recall what we have already studied in previous classes uh, the first thing is what is weathering or uh, weathering is the process uh, which takes place on the earth surface which causes uh, breaking of rocks and also the minerals into it and uh, what is erosion so erosion is the process of removing the earth's material from the original site through weathering and transportation so deposition and transportation from one place to another Now see the given pictures. Uh, observe the physical appearances of the rocks in each picture. Uh, you can see that the rocks are broken, fractured, and have holes in them. Uh, in a picture, you can also see a statue has which has been deformed. Uh, so why are the rocks in such a condition? So the condition of the rocks in the pictures is because of weathering. So in this lesson, we are going to study the types of weathering. so weathering is further classified as first one is physical weathering which is also known as mechanical weathering which includes exfoliation granular disintegration and block disintegration uh, the next is chemical weathering which in which we'll study about oxidation carbonation and solution next is biological weathering which is due to the living organism in this chapter we will also study about mass movements that is rapid mass movements and slow mass movements so like rock slide landslide debris fall etc so as we know breaking or weakening of rocks is a natural phenomena it is called weathering and weathering can be of three types as i already told you mechanical chemical and biological now in arid climate like a desert area uh, mechanical weathering is dominant because of the work of wind is more in desert area uh, if we take an example of humid climate where rainfall is more the rock comes in contact with the water and chemical weathering takes place and biological weathering is because of the living organism so which can be observed everywhere on the earth surface you can try this activity which is based on mechanical weathering uh, try this so take an onion cut it in the middle observe the parts and try to remove each skin layer of these parts you will notice that just as we can remove each and every outer layer of the onion similarly in nature rocks undergo such a process the exposed part that is the top layer of the rock heats more while the inner part is comparatively cooler that is the inside part of the rock so as a result the outer layer of the rocks fall apart from the main rock and this is what is called as exfoliation of the rock this results because of the intense heating of the rocks outer layers since rocks are poor conductors of heat the inner layers remain almost unaffected by the heat due to successive expansion and contraction the outer layers of the rock subsequently peel off from the main mass of the rock in the form of concentric shell as you see in this picture picture a the rock surface heats up and the minerals in the rock expands during the day time during the night time the minerals contract as the temperature goes down picture c the joints form in the outer part of the rock and picture d you can see the outer layer has peeled off so this is what takes place in exfoliation of rock the mechanical weathering mainly occurs because of the following reasons that is temperature frost crystal growth release of pressure 
and water so one by one we'll try to understand what are the reasons because of which mechanical weathering takes place the first one temperature the minerals in the rocks expand because of the heat and contract when the temperature decreases due to such continuous contracting and expanding tension develops in the rock particles each mineral reacts differently to the temperature such minerals expand more while others do not expand as much consequently the tension formed in the rocks also increases and decreases as a result crack develops in the rocks and they break in the areas where the diurnal range of temperature is higher weathering of this type is common in hot desert second one is frost one of the most important physical weathering processes in cold climates the alternate freezing and melting of water inside the joints of the rocks splits them into fragments this is because conversion of water into ice increases the volume of water by 10% in cold regions rocks are disintegrated into small particles through this process as you see in this diagram the water which has accumulated in the cracks of the rocks freezes and this increases the volume which leads to the tension in the rocks and they shatter third is crystal growth in rocky coast waves hit the sea cliff the water is alkaline that means the ph level of the water is high acid content is more some water droplets hit the cracks in the rocks in this alkaline water the soluble materials in the rocks gets dissolved this leads to formation of small holes in the rocks this is the effect of solution alkaline water gets stored in these holes because of the heat this water turns into water vapor and only the crystals of alkaline material remains in the rocks crystals occupy more space this causes tension in the rocks and the holes are formed this looks like a honeycomb next reason is release of pressure it is not that tension is created in the rocks only because of temperature freezing of water or crystallization the outer layers of the rocks exerts pressure on the inner or lower layers when this pressure ceases to exist the lower or inner layers get freed from the pressure this also leads to weathering the last reason which causes mechanical weathering is water some areas experiences more rainfall than others in such areas soaking of rock water also causes weathering of some rocks like sandstone or conglomerate these rocks are formed because of pressure on the agglomeration of sand particles that means collection of sand particles mud also makes sand particles come together when water penetrates such rocks the particles get loose and separate from the main rock this is called as granular weathering sometimes both temperature and water are responsible for weathering difference in temperature causes contraction and expansion which widens the joints or cracks in the rocks water accumulates in such wide joints and big blocks of rocks separate from each other which is called as block disintegration this is all about mechanical weathering i hope you understood this part we'll continue in the next part thank you very much